Hey everyone, welcome to Your First Digital Product, a show that helps maxed out service providers create their first digital product so they can gain an additional income stream, grow their impact without increasing one-on-one -on -one work, and experience more time freedom. On the show, I talk to business owners who have launched digital products and dig deep into how you can create, launch, and market your first digital product. I'm your host, Renee Morozovich. Let's go. Hey everyone, so excited to be here today with Jill Andrews. She is a conversion copywriter and web consultant who helps small and medium businesses turn their underperforming websites into slick lead generating machines. How are you today? Hi, fine. Thank you very much for having me. How are you? I'm good. Yeah, I'm really excited to talk about your products. I know you have a couple products out now and we talked briefly right before this that these are the ones that you started with. So uh, just tell me all about them. Tell me about your first products and what they were and what you hoped that they would do, the audience and all that good stuff. All right. So my very first product was a book. Uh, usually one might say, okay, you should start small and, you know, taste the waters, <laughs> um, whatever. Um, I decided to start with a book or I should say the book decided to start with me because okay. it was not my idea. It was really, really cool. So um, just for everyone who is doubting right now and in doubt, like, should I do it? Should I do it not? The, you have it the easiest if it starts by itself. So with me, it was like I was posting on LinkedIn um, three tips in a week, maybe four. And I was calling them a uh, website tip of the day. And I started numbering them. So one, two, three, four, whatever. And at some point, people would say, would see in my feed or in their feed, website tip of the day 28. And they were like, man, where can I see the rest of the tips? And I'm like, I don't know, just scroll through my LinkedIn feed, whatever. And it's not that easy because, you know, they wanted to have it all in one place and they started asking me. And I'm a lazy bum and I'm like, there's no way in hell I'm going to, you know, go and put it in some place. You guys just go figure out how you want to do it. I'm just posting my website tips of the day. And then by the website tip of the day number 80, it became regular messaging to me, like, where can I find them? Where can I find them? Where can I find them? Can you put them at one place? And I'm like, okay, I think if people really want this, I need to mm -hmm. think about it. So what would be the best place to put uh, 200 words, uh, you know, tips? Mm -hmm. I didn't want to put it on my website. And I was like, man, this seems really valuable. So why don't you write a book? I actually don't even don't remember. Maybe somebody else told me just, you know, mm -hmm. put them in a book. I have no idea. But the thing is, it found me. So it kind of developed um, through the activities that I was doing otherwise, uh, social media marketing. And I was like, okay, so I'm writing a book. And the thing is, because I'm a lazy bum, I didn't want to stare uh, at a white page. And I imagine like you need to start writing a book yes. from scratch. That is bloody terrifying. I don't know how people mm -hmm. do this. Maybe they're carrying this book with them for years, you know, something. But because mm -hmm. for me, if you tell me you know, write a book without having those chapters of the book already somewhere yeah. existing in some raw form, I would be like, no way in hell. Just go mm -hmm. do it yourself. I actually then with half of my brain, you know, another half sleeping or I don't know, caffeinated. <laughs> I started just copy pasting everything in Word from LinkedIn. And by then I already had more than 100 because the book's name is um, Make Your Website Work, 100 Copy and Design Tips for Smart Business Owners. But once I started writing the book, it was already more than 100, which was good because not every tip was uh, book worthy. You know, mm -hmm. some tips were overlapping, some tips were a bit too wordy. And I decided to do it in very small chapters. And I started working on it. And I hired a uh, proofread, I think, uh, mm -hmm. who helped me proofread it. I didn't need any editor because it was no fiction. It was literally marketing advice. Every <laughs> chapter is new. So mm -hmm. it's like, doesn't matter in which order you read them. So there are no characters, except of myself, where I sometimes tell personal stories from my personal life, client life. And uh, what I did, I mean, for me, uh, what um, I also thought, okay, why should people buy it at all? Well, first of all, people should buy it because they asked for it. Well, yes, <laughs> it was not my idea, so go buy it. But otherwise, if they wouldn't have asked for it, why would they buy it? So for me, it was like, I wouldn't release a product. Maybe it's just me. Don't take it like as a, take it with a grain of salt. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't release it if I see that somebody else is doing it better. Mm -hmm. Uh, or there is like something similar to whatever somebody else is doing. Maybe it's not the right attitude because they say the personality and the way you deliver mm -hmm. the same message also matters. But I'm, I'm not like this. To me, it's like, man, it needs to be something different. And uh, I 
can honestly say to me, this book is very different. You won't find the book like this anywhere because usually books on copywriting and design, they have a lot of theory and you're like, oh my God. But this is all super, super practical. You can take any chapter there and start applying uh, on your website, even if you do not know anything about copywriting or design. How is it possible? Because it's really small scope of every chapter. And I also mm -hmm. talk about the uh, reasoning behind those tips. And you will be so surprised how common sense it is. But as they say, common sense is not so common. So you will discover yes. that over there as well. <laughs> and I have comments. It's also on Amazon available. A lot of comments that say, that is actually so simple, but you don't realize it till you read it. And you read it till mm -hmm. like, man, why didn't I know it earlier? You know, this this kind of advice that everybody understands. But even professional copywriters and designers who get paid for their work also can learn something. Because they just, you know, sometimes forget the basics or maybe skip uh, that chapter or lecture in the university. If they, you know, studied it, whatever, but just they're not mm -hmm. doing it because I see it on websites. And it came from experience. It came from field experience. And nobody is writing about stuff like that. So I, so for me, just to summarize, it was like, first of all, I already had an audience. I was super lucky. Mm -hmm. Second of all, I already had material that I worked for one and a half years. I was just posting, you know, a couple of times a week. So I didn't have any time pressure. I, I wasn't like, okay, book, you know, I need to do mm -hmm. it by this and this day. Because this way I wouldn't have finished anything. And three, yeah, and three, uh, I was convinced that it's something super valuable. This is mm -hmm. also important because I think with my now product that is, I hope to release, I've been working on this like on off for two years, this bloody online course <laughs> that refuses to get born <laughs> for the reason, because there's no crowd of people saying we want this, we want it. Mm, I just think they yes. need it because so many people get it wrong, you know? And mm -hmm. I'm like, um, it's about finding your value proposition and building the foundation for your messaging. And it is less practical in the sense of that you need as a, consumer of this course that is way less fun than the book it is first of all longer second of all you need to do the work and i'm like thinking oh, do people really want to do the work mm -hmm. or would they like to have some flashy thing that they pay money for feel good about it and then don't do you know and then but because they think it's easy you know mm -hmm. how i'm gonna market it and there's just so much because i don't have this crowd of cheerleaders saying yeah bring it bring it we want it mm -hmm. and this is hard so this is a different way but I'm still, still powering through it because part of me believes that it's um, useful and the other part just wants to see what happens. <laughs> you know, right. Just like, why don't we do it? Because like, otherwise I would be sitting there and, um, you know, in my daydreaming, it's like being afraid and anxious. And I always think it's better to do and regret it than not to do and regret it. And mm -hmm. I would learn something. I'm thinking, okay, thanks. Okay, you, you will learn something about your audience and whatever. But it's again, super different course once again. It's nothing that um, you, you've seen anywhere because it's just really very thorough and mm -hmm. it shows you things i mean if you know it so many copywriters don't know it It will be very also um important for copywriters because this is the process i use with my clients uh, mm -hmm. when i start writing copy it's like discovery process how to uncover their messaging before we even talk about words you know mm -hmm. and you also will see how much work goes into this preparation steps but in my process copywriting writing words actually step number six could you believe it mm -hmm. because people think okay copywriting so come on just come on. here's your brief Right. That's not how mm -hmm. it works. And nobody right. gives me briefs. I get briefs from people. I uh, Even if they send me something that they think is a brief, I'm like, okay, very nice. Thank you very much. Here are the additional questions. You mm -hmm. know? <laughs> right. Because um, as a client, especially if you're not copywriter yourself, you don't have a process, you do not know what we need to create proper messaging. And mm -hmm. you have to, as a copywriter, you have to know what you need and you need to ask the questions. You need to analyze them properly and so on and so forth. But mm -hmm. okay. I already like, you know, took some kind of uh, <laughs> off road here. We jumped ahead. So okay. we talked about the book Then I, that was the first product. And then we talked about, uh, about my unborn product. Mm -hmm. What happened in between were mm -hmm. two super simple things that I think everybody can do. People who are listening to this, if you have been blogging, just blogging, you know, you already have that product sitting somewhere on your website. Mm -hmm. So what happened is, I mean, I started creating checklists in the very beginning before I went, uh, I started getting like regular uh, work and started uh, having income that would pay the bills as well. For two years, I was uh, blogging really like hardcore SEO oriented. Mm -hmm. And the things I did were checklists. So I have website, the ultimate website checklist, I think, uh, mm -hmm. 200 plus features of a successful website. And it it's done also in this very, very short 
form of short sentences and check marks. It's huge, but it's extremely easy to digest because there are no fluff. There's like zero, <laughs> zero fluff. And then I had like different uh, checklists, Fair, freelancer homepage checklist, yes. credibility <laughs> checklist. Oh, I forgot whatever else checklist. <laughs> at least five checklists over there. And um, at some point, man, if I, if I even remember the reason, I don't remember, but at some point I took a course about this in the sense of my first digital product or some, something like this. I forgot the name. I take, I take very few courses. I think up till now, I, I, I took three courses overall from the same person um, because I didn't feel the necessity of, let's put it like this. There's mm-hmm. nothing wrong with taking courses, but I just didn't feel like I need to. But product creation, I think... This is my weak spot in the sense of that I have a lot of blocks sitting in my mind. <laughs> and this course really removed it because it showed me that you can take a very useful thing, whatever is sitting on your blog, and just say, okay, now it costs you money to get it. And uh, for my checklist, I think, oh, yeah, it was website content checklist. This is so cool. I mean, I'm so proud of it. It's so amazing. I just, if, if it was a person, I would hug this list. This list. <laughs> I, will, I will print it out and hug it because I, I really love it. So much work went into it and it's just mm-hmm. so useful. And it uh, goes through nine most important areas of your website. It's like eight pages. And also one section is about... Um, Uh, every page, what you need to do on every page. Mm -hmm. And it's so helpful for somebody who's like, okay, I need to create a website. I'm not a copywriter. I have no bloody clue what I'm doing, you know? Mm -hmm. So you take this checklist and you say, okay, so on the homepage, this, this, this needs to be there. This, this, this shouldn't be there. This is this optional. I need to keep these, these things in mind. And it was sitting there for free. And it was my lead magnet because I would create this checklist. I would make them rank in search, not super duper big, no Mm 10,000 searches or whatever. It's like every keyword had like, I don't know, 100 searches a month or something. But still, it gets me um, subscribers. My list is growing without me doing anything. I stopped blogging like three years ago, I think. Mm -hmm. And then I was like, okay, so I'm going to turn this checklist into a product because I'm a lazy bum, but I'm a lazy bum who loves planning, who doesn't do anything without like thinking about what is it in for me in the future? Mm -hmm. How can I proceed being a lazy bum, you know, with this particular (laughs) action? This action needs to feed into my philosophy of Mm -hmm. being a lazy bum. So uh, with the checklist, the thing is, I do email marketing. I have a newsletter that I've had for six years, I think. I really love writing it. It's like connects me to my audience. It gives me so many new ideas for blog posts. It shows me what resonates. It, of course, spreads my name through the world. And the thing is that this course that is my future child, Mm -hmm. uh, at some point, I would like to also market it through my email list. And the thing is, if you get a person on email list to open their wallet a little bit, you know, and this checklist is like 449 and another checklist is 249. It already removes that barrier in the head. You can think about it. Maybe you also have this behavior when you go shopping for clothes and it takes a lot of time till you decide that you would like to try something on because you're like lazy. You're just still dressed and you're like, I need to go to change. Mm -hmm. But once you start, you just can't (laughs) stop. (laughs) That's the same same thing mm-hmm. with people paying you money. The very first hurdle to take is for them to open their wallets at least once. And imagine you have an email funnel. Okay, I say to you like emails every week. Oh, I don't sell many promotional emails. I really would mm-hmm. like, to me, it's like, you know, like with friends because I believe I deliver value. A lot of value mm-hmm. also for free. And there are people on my list who never bought my book sitting there for years, whatever, but if they enjoy free advice. They can totally do it. There are people who were not on my list and, you know, the very first time they come and they already buy something. So this also happened. And in this funnel right now, I have this, suge- I suggest my paid list, of course, and I market my book as well. And I noticed because I had a knee surgery where for one month I was not doing anything and I saw how the sales tanked. And so to me, it was an indicator. This is important vehicle. This is important, you know, part of my marketing mm-hmm. machine. And uh, what I would like to do in the future, that I would also market my course through my email funnel. They are on my Mm -hmm. list because of free lead magnets. I still have free lead magnets. My main lead magnets that rank the best, I decided to leave it free. It's better because to me, it's important that the list is growing. It has a healthy growth rate. Mm -hmm. But this website checklist, it it doesn't have that many visitors from search. I sell it mainly through email marketing. And by sell, I don't mean that I'm going to get, you know, super rich through it. Right. I have, I think, one one digital project a day a month. I'm just mm-hmm. telling you people how it is because uh, the traffic uh, to these particular pages is not that much from search. 
And uh, m uh, when I market it, it's still not everybody buys. I have a conversion rate on the page, I think is 4%. So you can imagine mm -hmm. from 100%, just four people buy. And, uh, but to me, this is not the thing. This is, I, I'm doing this to get people accustomed to giving me money. Mm -hmm. So the moment I have my course, which I will market like, not like a lazy, but a like a very professional, <laughs> you know, hard working, working <laughs> person. I really will put a lot of effort into this mm -hmm. because it's not 449 anymore, you know, it right. might be hundred plus, plus dollars. And to me, it would be like one sale would be uh, worth a lot. But I already like, you know, training people to pay me money. And people who will be listening to it are probably my subscribers. So <laughs> you all now know that's not, I mean, not a problem, guys or girls or fox, whatever. Um, I believe I deliver value, really. And mm -hmm. uh, if you don't believe this, this is totally fine. I mean, that's your opinion. I'm not going to force you uh, anything. But also, th this is the thing. This is how we buy. I mean, um, as a marketer, yes. you need to know people's psychology. You have mm -hmm. to do it. I would be really, really bad marketer if I didn't know this. If I would be just throwing pasta. What are they throwing on the wall? Spaghetti on the wall and, and, oh, and like see on the, what yes. sticks. Oh, and see what hello, sticks, yes. yeah. So with these digital products, but coming back to listeners who are listening to this, this is really like in the store, I said. You need to remove for yourself the, the block from your mind in doing this digital product. Why it, it really, I think for you, for people who are listening to this, it mm -hmm. feels like a lot of work because you don't know the technical side of it. And everybody's intimidated mm -hmm. with the technical mm -hmm. side. And I must say, I have a technical background. I'm a software engineer in my previous life. And I was intimidated. I was like, I don't want to. There's do a lot of pieces. Here. Yeah. But yeah. actually it was just one plugin. And then you connect it to PayPal. And it, I think it was a day. It, it wasn't a day in the sense of eight hours, mm -hmm. but it's just like whatever I did through the day, it was right. enough. Mm -hmm. So you just need this PDF. What actually is more important, I mean, not okay, it's equally important, let's put it like this, how you frame it. Because you need to tell people why they should give you money. That's the thing. Mm -hmm. And for me, I now I'm experimenting. I had a very long version of this list because it was like bloody long with super... Uh, a fancy navigation and some parts on the navigation you would see icons of chapters and then mm -hmm. short summary for chapter and chapters that were premium had this crown on top of that this is like prototypical way to mark something as premium feature mm -hmm. and uh i don't know okay it had let's say conversion rate of 3.9 percent now i made the page shorter where i removed all the chapters except of the first one and i did it like really standard marketing or landing page style where i said okay this is what you get you know, checkpoints, benefits, one, two, three, four. Mm -hmm. This is your sample chapter. Either you're buying it or you're buying it. You're not buying, but there is no more of this long story right. of where you can see more chapters. So I'm I'm curious to see how this will perform. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so I'm still experimenting with this because it's, it's, I think one should always experiment if one can. But the the main thing, this plugin, it is really not complicated. Yeah, perfect. Yeah, so yeah, it like is that. so simple to use. And I was like, oh my God. And I was afraid of this. Mm -hmm. I should have started long ago. So whoever really, really feels this desire to do it, but um, was like, man, this is too complicated. I'm telling you, you think it's complicated. Actually, it's not. Mm -hmm. Just take a day, look at, into this plugin. And you would be so surprised. And most of all, you would be very proud of yourself, would be relieved. And you will, yes. you know, every time yes. and I get an email and it says new sale, I'm like, yes. 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 Like so little. I mean, yes. nobody's getting rich from this, mm -hmm. but it's like, you know, for me, it was like a proof mm -hmm. of concept. And this in software mm -hmm. we would do, you know, when you have like a big project, you take yeah. a very small scope that is like similar to the major scope. And you're like, will my idea or approach work? And for me, it was proof mm -hmm. of concept. So now I know, okay, I can create. Mm -hmm. So many products, as many products as I like and whatever, but for now I'm concentrating on this core. Mm -hmm. But this 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 uh, hurdle was removed. Now I know how to do it. The same with the book. Whoever wants to create mm -hmm. the book, super scary. Yes, I know my technical stuff. How am I going to do Amazon? Oh God, I, yes. this was super, that was seriously bad. I, really, I mean, mm -hmm. I pity everybody who is going through it. I wanted to hire someone and I thought this person knows what they were doing, but they were not. I mean, it was, um, I had to do it myself and I managed to do it. And I'm so happy because right now I have a script. I'm in the script in the sense of programmatic, oh, mm -hmm. you know, whatever. Not script is in video script, but it's a program. Yeah. Where you can just feed my new manuscript. Oh, but yeah, because I, I actually plan to write the second part of the book as well. So 100 oh, more nice. tips because I oh, kept nice. posting on LinkedIn and it's already 200 something, 243 mm -hmm. tips, whatever. And I already selected the ones I would like to have. Um, so I know, wow, it will be so fast. So yeah, it's always like 
with the first thing, it's always super hard. And you're like, man, I don't know what I'm doing. But just, you know, take it it's step by step. For me, mm-hmm. step by step looks like a huge exo sheet that colors itself. Ooh. I just do some yes. some um some conditional formatting by mm-hmm. formatting by ca- color and I write uh, all the tasks and then all the subtasks and then I put how many percent is done and it colors itself automatically. So fifty twenty five percent is super red, you know, mm-hmm. like fifty percent is a bit yellowish, seventy five is like orange and hundred is like mm-hmm. you're done green. green. Yes, yeah. And then it also automatically calculates how much percent wise it's done. C- complete project, you know. Mm. So even the small like teeny tiny task you did today with one brain cell that was not too tired. <laughs> it still gives you, you know, now you are like a 40 before in the morning, you were 48.5% mm-hmm. done. Now you're 48.6% done. And you're like, mm-hmm. okay, this day was not for nothing. And I mean, this gives me a motivation to continue mm-hmm. with these huge projects. And really thanks to my background in IT consulting and software engineering, because, you know, project, project management and, you know, staying uh, motivated through the project, knowing wh- where you are in the project, it is super important. Because if you're just, even if you like have something written by hand, it's not the same to me, at least. Right? Mm-hmm. I need this um, very objective thing because, you know, machine, mm-hmm. Excel sheet. And uh, this is what keeps me going because I can imagine, especially if you've never done it before, it is so intimidating. But so is everything in life, people, you know? Just, yes. I think <laughs> yes. the idea is also, what if it tanks? Mm-hmm. What if it doesn't? Imagine yes. this. What if yes. it doesn't tank? Mm-hmm. Um, okay, but okay, if you if you really love imagining uh, worst case scenarios, imagine it tanks and, you know, now you, like, you learn something. Because to me, yes. I mean, what happened was I also had, it was not about digital product, but some kind of my my own internal, um, what's the name, marketing, small marketing, mm-hmm. what I was marketing, small offers, it did tank. And I learned from this that I actually, what I learned was like uh, that the offers were not properly tailored to the audience. You know, Mm -hmm. I did it how it was comfortable for me to, you know, price them and scope them. But then I understood, man, that doesn't make any sense. But it was already, this promotion was over, but it's like, this is not helpful to people. It was like half big things, you know, this one was too small, the other one was too big. And although I know people, there was so much traffic to these pages and everybody was so interested, but nobody bought. Why? Because it was not useful in this form that I created it. And I mm-hmm. learned something. Thank God I didn't invest. It was really my two-day effort, maybe, that I created two landing pages and an email funnel. But um, I was like, man, you learned something. And even, you know, these arrows, it, they teaches you that arrows are not bad. It's like not doing anything is bad. This is right. <laughs> because when you sit there, then you do not have any chance of success and coming forward because whoever thinks of creating uh, products, they're thinking about passive income. You know, they're daydreaming about waking up, looking at their uh, dashboard and saying yeah. $10,000 mm-hmm. uh, this month you earn mm-hmm. your sleep. This is my personal opinion. Yes, yeah. <laughs> but it takes a while to get there. You don't just yes, start Yes, I mean, there. if That's you do not, not do the first, the first step. Yeah. Um, yes. You know, right now, I also I also track all my progress in Excel where with the products, how many products, you know, I sold on, in one month, how many visitors, how, what was the conversion rate at this Ooh. particular month. And uh, like to it. me, it's important because I need to analyze things, you know. Mm-hmm. Right now, everything is pretty, I mean, uh, the same. There are no outliers, so I can't say, okay, something interesting happened or whatever. So it's pretty mm-hmm. stable. But it's nice to know, okay, you know, for example, if your page converts at 4%, you know, okay, just get more traffic, you get more sales, for mm-hmm. example, right? This is the thing. Coming back to my motivational speech on everybody who is listening, just do it, literally. Just mm-hmm. freaking do it. Mm-hmm. Uh, I know it sounds hard. Oh, you know, Jill, you already done it. But that's the secret. This is the only secret. Forget, you can say to yourself, okay, dear mind, dear anxiety, I do not care what mm-hmm. you're telling me. I'm too I busy for I this. I have to do it. Yes. Yeah, talk yeah. to the hand. Mm-hmm. You know? Yes. <laughs> right. It's like, because to me, I mean, it was my personal experience that the things that make me afraid, somehow now I'm addicted to doing things that make me afraid. Ooh. Of course, not like, you know, jumping off the building yes. or mm-hmm. riding a motorbike. Although I would like to ride a motorbike at some point. <laughs> I'm a recovering perfectionist. Uh, due like to that. really problematic childhood, I had this, it has to be perfect. It ha- mm-hmm. No, it, it, doesn't, it doesn't have to be perfect. And especially perfect to yours is not perfect for somebody else. So perfect yes. is a subjective thing. I mean, what are we talking about? There's no such thing as perfect. Right. You know, right. for you, it's perfect but for everybody else. It's like half of the thing that you just did, nobody cares about. It's like mm-hmm. there are things that 
you people care about and there are things only you care about. You need to mm-hmm. know the distinction, you know. So I was a I mean, still am. No, probably was. I'm already much better now. <laughs> um, and I was like, I need to do this. I have to do it. And it was so scary. But afterwards, it's like, wow, you know, this feeling mm-hmm. of this, like this, I got a kick of whatever substance there was that mm-hmm. was produced by my brain. And I was like, I need to do it again. <laughs> what else do I suck in? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> do it in public, you know. Something like this. And um, yeah. And then and it just makes you a different person. Because the thing is, mm-hmm. as, I, as, a, as a solopreneur, actually as a person living, living in this life, whatever you do, if it's uh, uh, work related, if it's even not your personal life related, it changes you. You grow, you, mm-hmm. you grow with it, you know, or, 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 or whatever. You change, right? It changes you. Yes. Exp- even yeah. if it's a little bit, you know, you learn something new. You understand more about yourself, about how the world works or doesn't, or how other people work. And it is important to do things that scare you. So another another piece of wisdom is like, do yes. more things that scare you. Because yes. what's the worst that would happen? Mm-hmm. Okay, even if they laughed at me and I would have said, okay, I suck kids. What? Because I said, like, oh, I suck at this. I know I suck at it. So what? Because seriously, so what? There are so few things in life that are important. As my late uh, great uncle used to say, I love this phrase. Uh, I wish you health and everything else will buy. It was his standard greeting to my birthday oh. and New Year's. And he was like, I wish you health and everything else will buy. He was very rich. <laughs> and uh, the thing was, he is so right. Because except of health and, you know, just being mm-hmm. alive and being healthy, everything else is really not that important. Mm-hmm. So Definitely. especially we're talking about creating digital products. Take something small. You're not planning to get rich. You're just planning to remove the barrier mm-hmm. from your head and uh, you're doing it for yourself as well, for your business, Mm -hmm. not only in the sense of money, but also in the sense of growth, you know, Yes, and strategy. Mm -hmm. It is super important. Yeah, I love that. Yeah, I love that you created things that you had already been creating, like it kind of just came out of that. Like, I think that's really valuable for people to, you know, say like, I don't have to start from scratch. I don't have to start from the beginning. I can let people tell me what they want. I think that's great. So tell me more about the course what is kind of, I, I know you said it's like, it's really, you're creating it because it's really important for people. And I like how you said that you use, you're using frameworks that you use in your own business to create it. So what is, I guess, the future of that? How long until it's launched? What are your barriers in the way? You know, and then how are you going to market that afterwards? Because mm-hmm. it's not something that people have been asking for. Yeah, exactly. So it's called Business Soul Searching. Again, a name that I did not choose. Two okay. separate clients who do not know each other refer to it because it's a my discovery process. That's the questionnaire that I send them before I start writing any words to learn more about their audience, business model, and uncover their value proposition and what we will be focusing on. Because uh, in this process, I also analyze the websites of their competitors. And two separate people sitting in the separate parts of the world use the same phrase, business soul searching. And the thing is, what happens is um, I take people, I make people answer questions. If I ask you, for example, who, um, what is your unique, uh, no, this is, this comes later, but it's like, um, who are you selling to? And you're like, yeah, small businesses in the U.S. and Canada. <laughs> and I'm like, man, you can totally say to everybody, it's kind of the same thing. We need to really to talk about this. So with every question, and I think there are approximately 18, I'm not sure, about 17, I think. Of course, every time a question is custom customized, but these questions are always there, right? And it already helps you a lot. And uh, so I'm like, I, I'm showing people, okay, this is the question. And I'm telling you, these are bad answers. <laughs> don't answer like this because, or don't create an answer that has these, you know, mm-hmm. things. Love that. Uh, your good answer to this question looks like this mm-hmm. because, you know. And the thing is, it uncovers your un- uh, unique value proposition. It has a question, what's your unique value proposition in the sense of why should people, no, it doesn't say what's your unique value proposition. It says it in a more natural way in the sense of why should people buy from you? Because unique value proposition is marketing speak uh, and not everybody, not every business owner will understand it. Maybe they are new, maybe, right. I don't know, they have nothing to do with marketing. There's indeed owner and marketing, okay. somebody else is doing it. So it's like, why should people buy from you and you're not a competitor? And that's a question, I think, somewhere like 12. Because the thing is, if I ask you right away, you will not be able mm-hmm. to answer it, especially if you're confused about your messaging. So all these questions before that, they are guiding you towards this answer. And while you are answering those questions, while you were learning 
how to answer them properly, how to be super specific, what to think about it, what to, you mm -hmm. know, disregard. It also talks about defining your target audience. We are not doing the stupid profiling with a picture. It's like, this is Kate. Oh. She's 23 and a baby and yes. she lives in suburbs of New York and she drives a Volvo. <laughs> Who cares? <laughs> oh, and she spends her free time on Instagram. Does it matter for you that she has a baby and drives a Volvo? The thing is with this, sorry, I'm saying I'm really <laughs> I don't know why. I get so it. maybe <laughs> strong words coming You're from passionate. out of my mouth. I like it. Yeah, because this is this is like really gets to me. This mm -hmm. is so strange. It has its own to Because you introduce so much so much bias. I mean, it's like, how mm -hmm. does it matter? Does it influence her decision that she has a baby? Maybe it does if if you're uh, selling products for babies, it does. But if you are selling uh, uh, let's say an um digital marketing tool software for business owners who are just starting business and Kate wants to start mm -hmm. her crochet business or whatever. It doesn't matter that she, she has a baby. It doesn't matter that she drives a Volvo. It doesn't matter, you know, like mm -hmm. five out of 10 things you listed do not matter, but you forgot to list the other eight that are so important. That do matter. So I, mm -hmm. re I really like teach them how to define the audience properly. So you know what to include into your marketing messages and what don't. And then we come to the value proposition. And then we, I also teach, this is so cool. I think, no, I've, I've never seen this done actually. How to properly compare your website to a competitor websites because Ooh. people don't shop in a vacuum. They don't hire in a the vacuum. They will mm -hmm. always open a couple of tabs next to yours. And the trick is that you don't need to be the best in the world. You just need to be the best among your niche. I mean, seriously, mm -hmm. you know, maybe it's about the price as well. You already have your competitors. You're not, com even if you're starting, let's say you're just starting your business as a coach and you think that you compete with the names that have been there for like 10 years. You, this is not your competition. Forget about this. Because the person who has the money to hire them, they will hire them. They won't even look at your website. Nobody cares yeah. about your messaging. If you don't have the credentials they have, forget it. So mm -hmm. you need to compare yourself to um, websites that, you know, um, really will your, be yeah. among those tabs. And, mm -hmm. you know, how to uncover which ones those be or will be. Or then how I have like this, then I give them a table where they need to go and check all the things. To mm -hmm. compare design-wise, it's also something important. Although we talk a lot about messaging, this is the only time we talk about design. Because... Design influences uh, a lot of, like, 90% of, like, first impression comes from design. So mm -hmm. if your design is really bad or like, giving this vibe of cheap and uh, scammy, they won't even read. Once I saw a website, I so regret I didn't save it. Oh. It was the most <laughs> spammy-looking website you'll see with orange, oh, no, 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 sorry, oh. red borders like oh, this. Oh. You know, big letters flashing, three mm -hmm. exclamation marks. But it was very good messaging. And I was like, oh, my God, mm. how did you manage to do this? You know, yes. and it was some competitive niche. And we were analyzing websites with my client. I was like, I cannot believe it. I really was like, man, maybe I should write them an email because, but okay, it's some competitive of my client. I can't do it. Of course, I didn't do it. But it was really such a pity because usually you, you see it completely vice versa. You mm -hmm. see like yes. a very good design. It's like really 95, 99% mm -hmm. of the cases because the themes, they come, you know, all templates, they look pretty shiny. People yeah. don't know how to use them. They use them badly in the sense of that so many images that have no value. It looks shiny first, second, and then people start reading. It's like, oh, no, this is like. We, yeah. we we deliver solutions that uh, suit every need. And you're like, oh, my God. You don't. Synergistic, say. all those buzzwords. Yeah. yeah. What was this? Mm -hmm. uh, something reimagined. Mm -hmm. Something is always oh. reimagined. You know, yes, skincare yeah. reimagined. Software mm -hmm. reimagined. Your taxes <laughs> reimagined. You know, they reimagined like bloody everything. <laughs> but, okay, coming back to what I was saying. So how to compare your website properly. And there we talk about design, what design has to do, actually. So, you know, even if you don't have a website, it will give you a really good start because they're like, you're like, oh, look, my competitors don't have this part. You know, mm -hmm. my competitors really are doing poorly the testimonials. They're doing like bad design for yes. testimonials. And you're like, man, if I only, if only I will follow Jill's advice on how to create a at, not to create, but because you're not creating them, you're asking them from the clients, but how to style your testimonial and how also sometimes you need to uh, ask your a client's permission to rewrite it in a more succinct way. Because some clients are so excited, they will, you know, send you a war and peace kind of novel and you're like, <laughs> what the hell am I supposed to do with it? And then you end up not using it because nobody's going to read it. Mm -hmm. And um, you actually, it's, it's totally fine to just write uh, to client and say, can, is it okay if I change it like this because blah, blah. And nobody ever objected to my case, but you need to know this. You need to know mm -hmm. the, um, like, three or four um, parts of really uh, trustworthy testimonial. Because 
your pers- your uh, competitors, they may even have flashy testimonial. But the moment you start reading, you understand this testimonial says nothing. It says, mm-hmm. uh, Jack did a good job. He's great. But what did Jack do? Want loan, yeah. you know, your loan or whatever. Did shopping for grandma. What is the hell <laughs> did he do? How, how should a prospect recognize themselves? And, you know, it also sounds super fake. You think, okay, this is such a great mm-hmm. testimonial. Look, Jake was great. He did a great job. But mm-hmm. if you don't say what Jake did, you know, mm-hmm. and how, this is worth nothing. But a lot of people don't know this. So this is also about that. How to compare your website. And at the end, I don't leave people hanging. I'm not okay. So you answer the questions, go do something with it. I'm like, okay, people. So you probably are wondering what to do with this. And I tell them, okay, on every page, you make sure that the answers from questions one to four plus six and seven appear. On your sales pages, you pay attention that you messaging or the problems you identified or objections, blah, 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 appear from your answers on questions, blah, 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 blah. So the moment they start creating the pages, they already have their own words that they can put, start putting on, on a page. This is another secret that probably copywriters, some copywriters say, but people think they're joking. Sometimes clients write, cop, write copy themselves. They pay us, mm-hmm. but then they kind of partially write the copy themselves. It happened okay. to me many times that I would copy paste phrases from my clients' answers uh, through these questionnaires. The moment you have the answers to this question, you're not starting with the white page. You think you are because you're like me. I didn't write anything for my website, but it's not at all the case. In this course, you will also get three templates for freelancer, a homepage. Oh, sorry, I forgot to say that it was, um, this is for freelancers and one for service providers, let's put it Okay. Mm-hmm. For service providers, whether it's one person business or small team or even medium team, it all applies, but it's not e-commerce, right? It's just for service yes. providers. So um, the moment you're like, okay, I don't know what to do. And you have a template for a service provider homepage. And this template says you, uh, tells you, has messaging in a nutshell in the sense of a uh, banner is, this is who I am, uh, get this benefit by doing this or uh, solve this problem, like I solve this problem by doing this. And this like blanks you already have in your answers. So this is like, uh, of course, it's not like a puzzle. You need to still think a lot about mm-hmm. it, but it gives you a skeleton. So you're like, okay, so I need this section. I need this section. I need this section. And the section talks about this, 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 and this, 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 I can already find in my answers. Mm-hmm. Sure, you need to rewrite it to make it more succinct. Sure, you need to put some kind of hook. For this, go read my book, let's put it like mm-hmm. this. But you you are not starting from white screen. This is so important. It, again, removes the barrier from, you know, people who want to do it themselves. Mm-hmm. And uh, I sense that with me, email list um, is indeed people who would like to do it themselves because my audience is like two kind of audiences. These people who come to me and become my clients, sure, some of them come from my email list, but mm-hmm. most of them actually find me on LinkedIn or through podcasts or through featured in some kind of articles. Mm-hmm. But the audience that sits on my list, and they're couple of thousands of people, these are those who would like to uh, do things themselves. And this is what I'm creating for them to help them. It's a bit scary. I did do a test, I think a year ago, 10 uh, students, and I only had, oh. um, I think, two lectures in the beginning. But I just wanted to know if the format was okay, because I was also not yeah. sure about the format. There's like give, feeding them, spoon feeding them those questions. Mm-hmm. Because people expect, okay, give me a questionnaire, I'll start answering it. But it would be super overwhelming. I didn't want to do it. And I was like, um, I'm not sure if it's a good idea to spoon feed them this as well, because it's not the way people are used to, you know, having information in this course. So I tested that and it seemed to be fine. So the format was fine. But I'm still not sure about how many people out there are ready to do the work, because it's Mm -hmm. really for people who are ready to do the work. It's Mm -hmm. nothing that you buy. You skim through and you think that you did something. No. But I mean, it's super helpful, but it needs you, you know, it needs you Mm -hmm. in your effort. I mean, we will see. I don't know. Yeah. Do you think that you would offer it to people who wanted to work with you, but maybe couldn't afford you like as an, as an option? Yeah, definitely. I mean, this is, I mean, they, they, some people do say to me openly, I mean, it did happen and they say, Mm -hmm. Well, you're so awesome, but right now we can't, uh, mm-hmm. I mean, I didn't ask them to work with me, but they just, you know, they just yeah. do it from themselves and I can totally feel that it comes from, you know, they just wanted mm-hmm. to show their appreciation and I really appreciate their appreciation. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, for these people like this, definitely. Mm-hmm. But again, you know, it's not something like, I think more useful, this would be my second course. I'm already thinking about second mm-hmm. course. Because really on top of that, when you have this foundation, how you define the messaging, 
and give people a course that says, okay, freelance homepage writing course, you know, and I didn't want to do it first, although it's like appealing because you say how to write a homepage as a freelancer, but mm-hmm. because I'm so thorough and honest as a, as a copywriter, you cannot write a good page, homepage, lead generation mm-hmm. page, whatever. If you don't, you haven't answered those questions. Right. Oh my gosh, no, you mm-hmm. can't. And especially if you've never done it. I can give you a template, but the template only, is only as good as stuff you fill it with. Right. And if you don't know, if you really come from like, I've never done it. And now you're trying to write a page without first, you know, th- thinking about how to structure your offer. Sometimes it happens that clients realize, especially if we're talking about adding new offers, it's like, oh, I don't need this. Or I need to combine mm-hmm. this too. And you first need to think about this. And I, I really, I couldn't get it, you know, uh, how should I say, I couldn't just go and say, okay, here's your course about freelancer homepage. I know you have no idea about your messaging, <laughs> uh, you know, whatever. Yes. You're not sure about the problems. Mm-hmm. But, you know, the title is very marketable. The yes, title catchy. sounds easy, catchy, mm-hmm. sexy, whatever. It's not mm-hmm. business soul searching, but a little bit mm-hmm. just sit there and you do the work. But this is the better way. And mm-hmm. I can't just give people something that I know is not going to work or let's right. put it like this, we're going to work worse. I want them to learn to do it properly. And mm-hmm. this is the only way. You first need to, you know, define your messaging, define, decide or uncover why people should buy from you. Because you, guess what? Some At some point, you may uncover that you are not ready to start a business, mm-hmm. that you may not have an audience and you better mm-hmm. know it now, not yes. after you invested God knows how much money in your website. Mm-hmm. Or, you know, first do proof of concept. So will I have enough people to market to? It's, again, important, but hard work. And mm-hmm. it, there is nobody there who is standing with, you know, signs saying, we want the course. This yeah. is like it was with the book, I'm telling you. We want the yes, book. Yes, yeah. We want the book. And I was like, okay, here's your book. <laughs> but this, like, you know, nobody, nobody knows. Like, okay, a couple mm-hmm. of people know. I start talking about it slowly because I already passed the 50% mark of completion. I finally scripted all the videos. I have three more videos to record. I already gave a lot of stuff to my proofreader and I'm excited. I really think that I'm going to get it through the finish line. I am my own blocks. I have days yes. where I sit there and I hyperventilate. And I, was, yes. I don't know what I'm doing. Yes. Nobody's going to buy it. Oh my God. Oh my God. <laughs> and there are days where I'm like, okay, screw it. I'm doing it. You know, where mm-hmm. There are days where I'm like, man, this is actually not bad. Mm-hmm. The thing is just keep going. You know, you're yes. like, okay, this is today's mm-hmm. is the day. So just go play some computer mm-hmm. game or whatever, you know. Because you're fancy, I don't know, yeah. whatever you're doing. Just declare this day for done, but just don't declare mm-hmm. the project for done. Just decide that right. it's a bad day, you know, and just move right. on. It's just probably it's this nice resilience day. and stubbornness that I have. And I'm like, I'm going to do it. Okay, it will take me like it. years, but I am going to mm-hmm. do it. So will will the course just be totally standalone or will you also have an option where you they get a little bit of you as a, at I'm a higher thinking about point. it. I really prefer to do it standalone because mm-hmm. I'm introvert and the, the less mm-hmm. I have to do with people, the better. Mm-hmm. Yes. I like people like one on one. Like if I have client projects mm-hmm. and we like, you know, this is like one person of contact to whatever, it's fine. Mm-hmm. But this kind of doing webinars or forums, it's yeah. not my thing. And to me, it's important that my business is fun and that I, you know, yeah. turning uh, up and I'm uh, like doing something with passion and mm. you know, this kind of interviews I really love. And, um, but I think this classes, virtual classrooms and whatever, I think I'm not built for it. I mean, I may mm-hmm. try it, but right now the idea just doesn't seem too cool. Mm-hmm. I also asked people whether they would like a forum when I was doing this. Yes. Well, it was 15 just students. Not many said that they would like to. Okay. They would like, some of them even said, interesting idea, but I'm not sure if I would have the time. And I'm thinking the course is already so time consuming. The mm-hmm. other thing is nothing is set in stone. You yeah. know, you just like launch and then you tweak it and while change. you go. Mm-hmm. If we just, yeah. you know, if we just see there is no way it works without my feedback, which I can't mm-hmm. imagine, but just theoretically speaking, why not? We just say, okay, mm-hmm. then I have to add some. Mm-hmm. Right now it's not, it's not planned, but um, maybe there would be some offers, uh, promo offers or launch offers where like first time people get my feedback as well. Mm-hmm. Usually indeed uh, that I go through the questionnaire and I do additional, I ask additional questions because mm-hmm. it's like what clients do. This also will help me see whether what I was talking about in these uh, slide uh, decks and the videos, whether it it is was good enough for them to give good enough answers. You know, for mm, me, I think yes. it's important even to improve the course that I have a look at, let's say, 10 first 
people or whoever wants me mm-hmm. to look at it. So I, for me, I understand, okay, how well was I able to guide them, you know, when I was offline, basically. Yeah. So the static, you know, image of me, mm-hmm. static print of me, that is yes. like, I can't give them live feedback. They have to just follow my advice, whatever it is, right? Mm-hmm. How well was it, were they able to execute it? And, you know, if I see them from 10 people, eight really they like, didn't do it well, it means it's on mm-hmm. me. If I see, okay, one, two, were not able to quite catch it. I may have like another five people whatever Mm -hmm. to check with and see so i will i will decide later but ideal situation is me waking up and seeing ten thousand dollars yes yes i have done nothing about it (laughs) but Um, you have done a lot already and i think that's that could be a hard thing for people to do because whenever you're working with clients one-on-one you do the work you send the bill they pay the bill or they pay the bill yes. then you do the work and it's it's really tied it's you know closely in time but this is like you're you've done a lot of work and you're doing a lot of work without seeing any payment yet and hopefully yeah. it will come to fruition you know through and it's good that you're doing the testing because yeah you don't want to spend all these years and all this time building something that people are not going to Exactly. Now, the thing is, I I was joking on Twitter. It's like, man, when I'm done with this course, I'm going to charge you people $1 million because it is so much work. (laughs) For like six minute videos, it took me like six hours of work, scripting and recording and cutting, editing, subtitles, Mm -hmm. uploading. I thought I'm going to go nuts. And I had like, I don't know, 15 videos. Okay, they're short because, you know, chapter and whatever. Mm -hmm. But just first you need to do slide, doing the slides. It's like, oh my God. And the thing is, it's already all in my head. It's nothing interesting. Mm -hmm. I will not learn anything new. And for me, it's also hard. But Mm -hmm. here, everything, it is something that I've done for the past six years. And I'm like, man, (laughs) that is so hard to sit there, have the patience and do all of this. Mm -hmm. And it is super, super, super. It's a lot of work. Indeed. Mm -hmm. I've never thought that a course is, of course, is work people. So digital products, little small digital products, Mm -hmm. checklist, template, whatever is not not much work really especially if you've already done half of it but a course is like course. crazy crazy lots yes of work. yeah and i'd like to tell people like don't start with a course don't yes you don't know cut like a year's worth of time where you're holed up in you know your office yeah recording all these videos and doing all these things with no feedback and then you launch it you know and then nobody buys it like i just don't think that's a good approach no, no, no. You need this. to start really yeah. use like you need to start and then also builds your confidence because yes. you learn more mm-hmm. about your audience. Because yes. especially if you're like, okay, you're starting with the course, but then you need to be super confident. Mm-hmm. If you say, okay, this is I have an audience who's saying, Where is the course? Then do the course. But it, yes. it's really mm-hmm. usually it's not the case at all. Usually mm-hmm. it's something that we decide that it may be useful, you know, mm-hmm. based on some criteria we have. And yeah, that is I was also, I mean, that's why it's, I think, taking so slow because even after I wrote a book, you know, created digital products and mm-hmm. still I'm like, man, I don't know. What, no, that is so scary. Mm-hmm. Who is going to buy it? And maybe I'm doing too much because I'm this kind of a too much kind of person because you ask me a simple question, you know, mm-hmm. like, what should I put in my website tagline? And I'm like, mm-hmm. it depends. And then I, then I give you a lecture of one hour about <laughs> all the factors it depends on and Actually, other person will just give you a two sentence answer, but mm-hmm. I know that's a wrong answer because especially in copywriting, so much depends. depends. There are so few things that do not depend on anything, mm-hmm. but, um, yeah, I'm kind of this depends kind of person and I need to give you full mm-hmm. amount of information mm-hmm. and I'm afraid that I'm a bit overdoing, maybe not because I'm stopping myself and I'm like, is it really important that you say it now? You know, how many cases out of hundred will this apply to? Maybe mm-hmm. you just forget about it. <laughs> So I'm already aware of this, you know, Mm -hmm. and it's just hard to say. It will be my first course and I'm uh, prepared for both, you know, for success and failure. And I'm like, whatever Mm -hmm. happens, I don't care. I need to do this um, because this is how I learn. This is how I will move forward. So what then do you think or what do you expect the direction of your business to go? Do you think you'll be spending more time creating these products or just an equal amount of time uh, working with clients one on one and the same time, you know, creating the products? Like, what do you think about going forward? Well, it depends on the monetary reward in mm-hmm. this situation. But even if the monetary reward is like really good from the passive income, I would like to keep working with clients because mm-hmm. it's like I can't teach people something that I haven't done in years, right? Mm-hmm. So it that needs to sense. be current because now this very scary chat, you know, artificial intelligence mm-hmm. stuff is coming. Yes. I'm not that scared because my thing, my, my point on this is like, uh, how can you hold a machine accountable? Because before you came, 
you know, to a freelancer who was like, uh, you know, uh, uh, like write to me something and then they wrote something and you used it and it didn't work, whether it was SEO advice or marketing strategy, because we're not talking about the words. Okay, sure, a copywriter who will be then hired, they can uh, use it for themselves, not tell the client to make that work faster, but still produce a really good outcome because they know what good copy is if we're talking about mm -hmm. copywriters. But the people started generating code with this, you know, that they're going to use somewhere on their production system mm -hmm. or um, they start generating marketing strategy. And I'm thinking, okay, you take this piece of code, you take marketing strategy, it doesn't work. What are you going to do? Mm -hmm. Are you gonna sue the chatbot? What what, right. what is how how do, do does this chatbot have reviews or project mm -hmm. previously done in your need? How is it supposed to work, people? Seriously, yeah, it looks like it produces something that is coherent or it looks like an average operator. Okay, then the other thing is just don't be average. You know, I know I'm mm -hmm. not average, and I also do website reviews a lot, website audits, not only the exact words. But I do uh, analyze the data, the performance, you know, the Google mm -hmm. Analytics, the heat maps, the session replace. So I'm thinking, good luck, chatbot, doing this, you know. Yes. <laughs> right now, you cannot replace. This yeah. you cannot replace. And even the words, I think, uh, this is like, this is maybe a, um, like, gullible thing in the sense of people would think, because words are words, you know, letters on the screen, and it sounds nice. Yeah. But, you yeah. know, the thing is, a professional copywriter, they guarantee more or less. Sure, we can't guarantee everything because mm -hmm. not everything in our hands. If your traffic is rubbish and if you're bringing yeah. people who are interested in dog shows to your SaaS website, sorry, you know, mm -hmm. it's not going to happen. But, um, or design, if your designer completely screws up uh, the, mm -hmm. the page and that, you know, disturbs the messaging and you have flashy pop-ups, what do you, your website loads slow. I mean, it's not in my mm -hmm. hand. But otherwise, you know, still, you know that it's a copywriter who worked with these famous companies who have a track record. What kind of track record does your mm -hmm. chatbot have? You know, I mean, I, I would like to wait and see what happens because it's it's hard to predict anything, right? And so many predictions were made about other things that didn't go, you know, into fulfillment or whatever. So, but I'm still optimistic, but I'm just saying, you know, we don't know what, what happens. Mm -hmm. uh, so I would like to stay uh, active in the industry to work with clients to know what's new, what kind of new tools. Because heat maps, it's not something. Maybe if you ask people, I don't know when heat maps and session replace came into existence. Maybe not that long ago, right? Yeah, I need to know about stuff like this. And uh, you know, people they, then they start getting messages from their their prospects saying, "Wow, we read your website, and it looks like mm -hmm. you're the only people who understand us." This is such this is such a great feedback. I really love it. Yeah. I think about it often because this is what I aim for the website, when people read my copy, they should get a feeling that this company or this person, service provider, they understand me like mm -hmm. nobody else or better than anybody else. So this is like, you know, emotional based, uh, copyright, uh, empathy yeah. based, empathy infused copyright. Mm -hmm. It is super important to me. And uh, so because I also uh, really enjoy reading about psychology in general. So that stuff, you can't just you know, know by just creating some products. And yeah. the products, will, I also need to know my audience. I need to talk, stay in touch with my audience to know what they need because I have like this different part of the audience who would like to study it themselves, who mm -hmm. would like to do it themselves. And yeah. So to me, I can't imagine just sitting creating products. I think it mm -hmm. will be also boring. And it also would feel fake because how can I tell people about something that I stopped doing? For, you mm -hmm. know, it's well, yes, because it changes, like you said, like this, this yeah. stuff changes over time. So what can you kind of just to summarize, maybe two to three things that you recommend for people who have not done anything yet? They are they're kind of on the on the precipice of, you know, creating something and they're trying to find their direction and their confidence and things like that. So what is maybe something either that you did or didn't do or wish you had done um, that you recommend for people who are creating their first product? Yeah, first, very important thing that will also give you confidence Like listen to your audience. You can even mm -hmm. start a poll or whatever. Um, when you're sitting there, like you didn't start anything, you have no audience and you're just reading or like uh, uh, spying on those LinkedIn posts from like LinkedIn bros saying create a digital product and you will be a millionaire. You need an audience for that. You need mm -hmm. people who are going to buy it. And first of all, I would say if you really, really didn't do anything, you don't do any marketing, you don't have an audience. First, create that. First, start marketing mm -hmm. your ideas, your advice, whatever you you are offering. You know your your product. Let's put like the services, mm -hmm. whatever. 
just to uh, test the waters and see what do people want, actually? What are their problems? How can you help them solve it in a digital product way? Mm -hmm. So it's not creating digital product for the sake of digital product. It's creating right. a really, really helpful thing. Because the, only only if it's helpful, people will buy it. Well, unless you're a LinkedIn bro, the teaching LinkedIn bros to you know, sell to LinkedIn bros who would like to teach the LinkedIn yes. bros to sell to LinkedIn bros. But that's a different story. Let's hope you're not yes. that person. <laughs> um, so if it's not some kind of scheme, you know, mm -hmm. if you're like seriously, like serious person who would like to help people for real, mm -hmm. uh, first, you know, just... Listen to your audience. If you have an audience, you're in a really great position. Do a poll, do a survey. If nobody answered, reach personally to people you know who are on your email list in their DMs. They would not mind if you had a positive interaction in the past. Maybe you answered their question or whatever. Mm -hmm. Start doing research, you know. Start doing research and then, um, because, you know, I was just lucky that people were like, we want the book. But uh, not everybody will be probably mm -hmm. so lucky. Um, once you've done that, then start when you, when you say, okay, I, it, it looks to me that people would like to have, uh, this product, um, then, uh, just, you know, just create it, but make sure it's something small. Mm -hmm. Um, I mean, it's hard to give like this advice because I don't know the topic and the niche, you know, that is super yes. hard to give this kind of advice, Yeah, but I would start small because you can always scale up, scaling down just doesn't feel good let's put mm -hmm. this because you already invested so much time. But it always needs to need to scale, uh, can scale uh, up. Start with something small. Maybe it it can be um, literally anything. It can be checklist. It can be in a different format. Let's say it can be an Excel sheet because I have mm -hmm. a credibility checklist. It's in an Excel sheet form. I have a um, this ultimate website checklist that is just a PDF in a mind map form with a Ooh. mind map tool where you can just check off the task and collapse the branches of a map tool. Mm -hmm. Just think about it. I mean, if you know, some people um, sell as a digital product piece of uh, automatically run some kind of software. It's it's based on really. It's like it's a plugin for your Excel or something. You know, for mm -hmm. or in Google Sheets, something that you know you can, or just like a template. You copy paste your data and it does something to your data. And then or template. You know, if let's mm -hmm. say you are a web designer, um, or just a graphic designer, maybe I know family planner. I don't know, you know, it just starts small, but something that resonates with your audience and solves their problem mm -hmm. fast and, you know, with in a way that is helpful. You know, don't start with a course. That will be a third part of the advice. You will regret it. <laughs> <laughs> Even if you do um, one later, you might regret it. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, and, and it's like, and, and okay, the other part of advice is just like uh, work through the phases of doubt. You will have phases mm -hmm. of doubt. But the thing is, a lot of people are doing it. A lot of people done it despite the doubt. Everybody has doubt. I have doubt. So many doubts. Mm -hmm. I may look very put together, but it's not true at all. <laughs> <laughs> on some days, let's put it. Okay, yeah. on some days I am put together. But mm -hmm. on some days, no. Mm -hmm. It's normal. It's really normal. That's the way. All right. Uh, don't think that, oh, everybody is doing better than me. And mm -hmm. No, you're comparing uh, your worst moments with their best moments. Nobody right. will post. Nobody will post online mm -hmm. being an embryo pose on their bed, you know, crying for three mm -hmm. days. Nobody's going to do this. But you know that you may have phases. Like, I really hope you don't. But, mm -hmm. you know, we yes, all know. No, it's it right. Happens. It's normal. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I totally agree. Just, yes. you know, just tell, just be also be kind to yourself. I mean, that's also mm -hmm. like try not to push yourself too hard, but also don't. Mm -hmm let yourself procrastinate yes like, yeah. super hard because mm -hmm. if you notice you procrastinate maybe be an adult to this child who's procrastinating right now and say mm -hmm. okay you know i give you 10 more minutes and after 10 <laughs> minutes either you go to sleep because it's too bloody i'm in the morning mm -hmm. or you do something useful another thing that i really find helpful is doing at least something just even if it's five minutes because mm -hmm. five minutes over a week of seven days is 35 minutes. And mm -hmm. if you do 10 minutes, wow, that's even twice as much. And uh, small things done regularly add up to really big thing. To me, it added up in a, to a book because these tips I kept doing regularly for a year and a half. And suddenly I had a book, mm -hmm. right? If you would like to start with a book. That's what they yeah. Um, starting from the white, completely white page with no ideas whatsoever. It's super scary and it's also risky. I must say the mm -hmm. risk is higher. So listen to your audience, see what you already done, if you can repurpose it, upgrade it, you know, try to find something where you did would not have to start from scratch. That's right. also right. important. 
Yes, I love you. So great points. Excellent points. So where can people find you online? Where do you want them to go to learn more about um, you? My website, jillandrews.com. That's really my harbor. You will find everything there. My book, my YouTube channel that I really would like to uh, start doing more. But I was waiting for the course. It was already proof of concept. Mm -hmm. where that, it's, it's a viable marketing channel for me. And it was. But mm -hmm. just doing videos is just so effort, mm -hmm. so much effort. And I was like, if I have nothing big to sell, I'm not going to get, you know, any more, like really little monetary reward from this. Why bother so much? Mm -hmm. But I just wanted to see if it okay. works. You still, you will still find some uh, fun videos, teardowns mm -hmm. of a couple of pages I wrote. I really like to teach people in a way that it's not overwhelming. Mm -hmm. That with stories, with jokes, with analogies that, you know, are seriously weird or whatever. Because this is how you remember things and how yes. you don't feel overwhelmed. Mm -hmm. So this right, is my right. style and you will mm -hmm. find some YouTube videos. But okay, coming back, jillandrews.com, just like one mm -hmm. word. And there you will find everything. Twitter, LinkedIn, and YouTube mm -hmm. are the only three social platforms okay. I am uh, active on. And I think that there you will also find my book and checklist as well, where it just says tools where I have like menus, hire me or do it yourself. And when you click on do it yourself, it will be a tools label. You go there and there. You find free and paid. I have two paid checklists and I think four, even one quiz also for free. They are all lead magnets. You can get on my list mm -hmm. either with the lead magnets or without. I also have a sign up form. And interestingly, people do sign up with really with no, no incentive whatsoever. Yes. Just after reading my article, mm -hmm. you also can connect with me through a contact page. There's a form there and also my email address. Awesome. Great. Awesome. Thank you so much. It was great to talk to you today. I can't wait to get Welcome. all those Thank links and so put them much. in the show notes. Yes. Yeah. And all good. So thank you so much again. I'll talk to you soon. You're welcome. Thanks for having me and talk to you soon. Hey, thanks for listening. I'd love to continue the conversation in your inbox. Email subscribe to hey at yfdp.show or sign up in the show notes to get bi-monthly emails about how you can create, launch, and market your first digital product. Can't wait to see you there.